let's try to price the uh, call option in the black shells model well it is convenient in fact uh, we have to write the stock not in terms of its dynamics I'm going to look at a uh, call option which only depends on the final stock price as a capital T I have to write as a capital T in terms of what it is uh, which is this I had a formula like this when I had W here and mu here but since when I replace W by WQ I also replace mu by R then this formula is correct okay? so this is the same formula as before except uh, I'm replacing mu by R and I'm replacing um, W by WQ so I know that under the pricing probability under the under the risk neutral probability the stock price at the end at maturity looks like this therefore this is a function this is a function of uh, of really of normal distribution it's a function of uh, Brownian motion at the final time which we know is normally distributed and now it's just a question of uh, <coughs> question of uh, computing expected value of functions of a normal random variable so there is a general formula before I go into the call option uh, let's look at look at this look at this uh, uh, line down this equation at the bottom of this slide uh, the from the standard probability calculus based probability computing expected values of some function G of uh, wq of t over square root of t why do i divide by over square root of t uh, because uh, because uh, then i have a standard the standard normal uh, random variable uh, zero one z mean zero and standard deviation one so the, sta the standard formula in probability theory to compute expectation of a function of a standard normal is integrate that function against the standard normal Gaussian density which is 1 over square root 2 pi e to the minus x squared over 2 okay so this is this is just a formula from probability theory and therefore I know how to compute options of this type which are functions of, of just the final value of the brown motion it's just integration sometimes I can compute this integral sometimes I cannot compute this integral but I can always compute it numerically it's not a big deal to compute uh, these type of integrals uh, numerically therefore I can always compute the prices of options which are just functions of the final stock price in the black shells model that's just going to be a function of the final value the, at maturity of the Brownian motion so that's the general formula turns out for the call option that we can actually compute this so let's let's look at that okay but this is very general and you don't have to be an expert on computing partial differential equation solutions you, you just have to compute an, an expected value and that's integ direct integration you know exactly what you have to integrate so it's a straightforward way to solve more straightforward than than computing solutions to partial differential equations okay going back to the call option I need to compute this expectation okay discounting this is deterministic this is not going to matter much well I'm going to split it into two parts well this positive part the subscript plus means I'm looking at the maximum s of t minus k and zero that's going to be different from zero only when at the end the option is in the money meaning at when at the end s of t is larger than k okay? so I'm going to compute these expectations only on the events on the outcomes where s of t is bigger than k so I denote that I multiply by, by this indicator random variable s of t bigger than k here and here so what is this indicator random variable 
this indicate a random variable of uh, of any event a. Well, that's just one or zero. It's one if a happens, if it occurs, and zero if not. Okay, so the, this is random. It's one if the event a happens, and zero if it doesn't happen. So here I'm just multiplying by the event that at maturity the call option is going to be in the money. And I'm multiplying by zero when it's not, because then the option value, option payoff is zero when it's not in the money. I do that because then I can split this into two parts. This expectation of this times this indicator function minus this count is strike times the expected value just of the indicator function. And uh, this is deterministic. I took it out of expectation, and I just have expected value of the indicator function. All right, so this is, if you remember the black Scholes formula, this is kind of what we had. We had a one term minus another term, but we still haven't finished here the computations. So let's try to get the black Scholes formula. I'm going to show only details only for the for the second part which is easier so let's do that we have to compute this okay let's do that on the next in the next slide okay i'm tr i'm trying to compute this a uh, discounting factor can just go out now what is expected value of the indicator function well, this is a simple random variable. It's either 1 or 0. So it's 1 times probability that it's 1, uh, which is the probability that S of t is bigger than k, plus 0 times the probability of the complement event. But that's just 0. Uh, that 0 times something is 0. So, so expectation of the indicator random variable is just probability, in this case q probability, of S of t being bigger than k. By the way, this, this, this thing is called a digital or a binary option, an option which pays $1 if S at the end is bigger than the strike price and $0 if it's less than the strike price. That, that's a digital or a binary option. <coughs> okay. All right, so for that second term, all I have to compute is this probability. Let's compute it. I write my S. I had a formula for S of t. Here it is. OK, but this is now just computing probability of normal random variable, a function of a normal random variable being larger than something. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of algebra to move, move everything to the right-hand side and leave here with uh, w q over of capital T over square root of t on this side. Right? I want this on, on one side because this is standard normal. And I want to move everything else on the other side. If I can do that, and I call this whatever is here, I call it minus d2, then this probability is just the probability of the standard normal being bigger than minus d2, but it's the same as the probability of a normal being less than d2 because of the symmetry of the normal distribution. Let's just draw that. Right, normal distribution looks like like this. So if I have if I have let's say uh, minus d2 here, I'm gonna pretend that d2 is negative so that minus d2 is positive. So the probability of being bigger than minus d2 is this area above d2, but that's the same as the area below above minus d2, and that's the same as the area below d2. Right? So that's why probability of being bigger than minus d2 is the probability of d2, or being less than d2. Okay, remember capital N is, the, is exactly the notation for, for uh, this area, the cumulative standard normal distribution function. All right? All right, I kind of skipped these steps here. How would you move w to one side? Well, you would take logarithm to kill the exponential, right? You would get log of s of 0 plus 
the exponent, you will kill the exponential, and then you just move everything which is now w to the other side, and you divide by sigma, and you also divide by s uh, to, s to cancel sigma, and you also divide by square root of t to get this. Right? So if you do that, you get this d2, which is exactly the d2 from the black shoals formula, let me remind you. So this slide uh, is the slide we had before. This is just the black shoals formula. So if you look at d2, here it is. That, that's exactly what you get when you take logs over there. Uh, and uh, okay, here I'm starting from uh, in the previous slide, uh, small t was zero. Uh, so <coughs> so s of zero here. You here you have s uh, sigma. You divide by sigma and you divide by square root of capital T. Uh, and so uh, you, you exactly get this term on the right hand side with a minus sign, uh, which is which is then exactly. So what we have shown, we have computed in like ten minutes. We computed this second term of the Black Scholes formula directly. We didn't have to write down any differential equations. We didn't have to solve those differential equations. We just computed the probability that the option is in the money, well, risk neutral probability that the option is in the money, because that was the price of the second term. Okay. Well, uh, once you discount and multiply by k. Okay. So th this we, we got in relatively easy way by knowing that we have to compute the price as an expectation of the discounting claim under the risk neutral probability. And we knew how to write the stock price, we know how to write the stock price under that probability, right? We use this expression here. So it actually is uh, easier than, uh, than uh, the way Black and Scholes did it. And then for the first term, for the first term you would have to compute this other expectation Okay, th this is not going to be as easy because it's not just the expectation of the indicator random variable, you're also multiplying by s. But still, you can write it, you can write it as an integral, and then you can, you can so in fact, that integral happens to be solvable. If you can br find details in, in different textbooks, in particular in, in uh, my book uh, with Zapatero, if you want. But the bottom line is it's an integration, calculus, standard calculus integration, and, and it can be computed, and you get this. When you compute it, you actually get, you actually get uh, this, yeah, this first term in the black shoes formula. Okay, and, and that computation is also not, not too hard. Well, if you know how to integrate, uh, if not, you can just use an integrator, online integrator, and you get it. Okay, so that's the way to price in the Black Scholes Merton model using risk neutral pricing by computing expected values.